Hi, this is Jerry Jenkins. Uh, this is a short video uh, for people that want to start learning Python and want to set up uh, Windows 11 with Python and a good IDE, and we're going to use PyCharm. So this is uh, Python and PyCharm in Windows 11. Uh, so first you want to check if it's installed. So I'm just going to go to the uh, Windows key and search for uh, remove. So we're going to look at the programs that are installed. So we're in add and remove and then we're going to click in the apps list and just type PY. And if you have it installed, it'll show up here. It may just be one thing. In this case, I've installed it from the App Store. Uh, I recommend not to install it from the App Store. So if you go to the App Store and uh, type in Python, you'll see it has several uh, versions of it that you can install. But the App Store has been known in the past to have uh, uh, it doesn't it's exactly install your standard uh, Python. Uh, they may have fixed that, but I don't trust the App Store or App Stores in general. So we're going to install it from the source. So, uh, but if you have an older version installed, you'll probably want to uninstall it first. You just uninstall it like any program. You go to the uh, the apps remove, uh, click here, and say uninstall. And if you get any security warnings from Windows, you should answer that as yes. And that's for true for this whole video. Okay, so now we're going to go to Bing. And I'm going to go to python.org. This is where you get the newest version. Right now it's at 3.10.5. Uh, so you go to Downloads, just hover here, and then you move your mouse. This will be the most current version. It's going to recognize you're already on Windows. So you just click here. And it's going to download a file. You open it. And uh, we just want to click one option. This option here, add Python to path. Uh, if you're running in a terminal like uh, command prompt or uh, PowerShell or the new Windows terminal, uh, this will allow you to type the word Python to uh, execute Python interpreter. And it also makes the other uh, Python tools available from your terminal. So I recommend you, you click on that. And then for the rest of install, uh, we don't need to do anything. Um, you can always look at things you can customize if you're more advanced. But for a new user, just say install now and let it go all the way through the install. And we'll speed this up on the video. So it's successful. Go ahead and close this. I'm going to close the browser. And we're just going to go back to the uh, start menu. And you'll see it uh, It shows you what it installed. It installed a program called IDLE. If you're in a uh, class, your instructor may have you write some Python IDLE. It's a primitive editor that you can write Python in. But we're going to use PyCharm. It also in, in, uh, installed the manuals uh, and some documentation here. And it's actually better to go to the python.org and look at the documentation online. It's much better formatted and easier to use. And then it actually installs the Python packages here. We're going to go ahead and install PyCharm. So we're going to go back to Bing. And where you want to go is to a site called JetBrains. And we're just going to do Google search and type JetBrains um, PyCharm. And you'll see it takes you to uh, JetBrains UI Charm. Click on this. And uh, this is the main page. You'll not notice the uh, it's at www.jetbrains.com slash PYCharm. Uh, do not use this download button. We're going to go to the big black one here in the middle. And then there's two versions. There's a professional version and a community version. Uh, if you're doing um, just learning programming, the community version is fine for you, and it's free. If you are a student uh, or you have the money, uh, you can get this professional version. And uh, if you're a student, you just need a student uh, uh, email address ending in edu, or you need in Europe what's called, uh, I think it's a student, international student ID. Uh, so either one of those, you can get the uh, professional version. So we're just going to download the community version and we're just going to run through. There's no options you have to check. Uh, just install it with uh, all the defaults. So we're just going to do that and then we're going to set it up.
Okay, so we can run it from here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish, and we'll go to the uh, Windows icon, and you'll see it installed it right here. So you can always call it up as PY Charm. So let's go ahead and start it. When you first start it, and you've never installed it before, you'll get the terms of service. So you go ahead and confirm that as you normally do. Uh, you can decide to send them data. I'm not going to send it. It's now starting up for the first time. And this is the normal screen when you start it and you don't have a current project. Now in programming IDEs, you usually have a folder that you're working in where you organize everything for, a, say, an assignment for your class or you're writing a program for yourself. And so each program you write may involve a lot of different files. So it's all in one pro uh, project uh, folder. It's called a project folder. So we can create a new project here, but before we do that, we want to set this up so you have the right defaults. This is what most videos don't show you. So what you want to do is go to Customize, and then go to where it says All Settings. And what we want to do is change some of the defaults. And it's a little tricky to set it because uh, it's just strange. So what we're going to do on the left side, you want to go to where it says Python Interpreter. And it says it doesn't have one right now. So you hit on the gear and you say Add. And then it defaults to making what's called a virtual environment, which is a virtual environment here. This is what you don't want. This is for more advanced uh, Python users. And most IDEs don't make this the default. They make it simpler for users. So as a student, we want a simpler environment. So we want the one that was directly installed rather than vir creating a virtual environment. So we're going to create a, a click on System Interpreter. And you'll see this is listed here. And just say OK. And we've got to do one more thing to lock it in. And that's create a project. So we're going to go uh, OK here, takes us back to, uh, and then Projects, which takes you back where the starting screen is. And we're going to say New Project. So uh, when you open up a new project, there's several options we want to talk about here. But let's start with the, the first time you open a project, you have to do this. Right now it says uh, Virtual Environment. You don't want this option. You want to go down to say Previously Configured Interpreter. That's the step we just did. In uh, now we'll talk about the other options. So from now on, when you create a new project, it's going to default to this. That's why we're doing it the first time. Now, OK, so the other things you have to do are two things. You have to give it a name and a location. So here's the current location. It, it, it creates a folder called uh, PY Charm Projects in whatever your home folder is. And then you change this name right here. So we're going to make a pro project that just says hello. So I'm just going to type hello here. And that'll make the name of the project. And then uh, here, it, you can create a script that will fill in things for you. It's like a framework. And we're not going to do that. Most uh, as learning, you want to do it from scratch. That'll save you some time later. Uh, you can always play with it later. And we're going to hit Create. Now, when it creates a project, especially the first time you run it, it has to uh, do a thing called indexing the files. So you see down here it says Scanning Files to Index. So I'm going to point this out later. It may not be done. It takes a little while. So where it says Hello here, this is the name of the folder for the project. If you right click and you say New Python File, that's how you add a new Python file. You'll notice you can add other kinds of files for more complex projects. Click on Python File. Then you make the name of your file. And usually it's a lowercase name. So we're going to say Hello. Uh, students. And it's going to add uh, .py to it. So go ahead and hit enter. It's going to create the file. So I have a blank file here. I'm going to write a Python comment. Uh, say hello. And then I'm going to write some code. So I'm going to say print. And you notice it does a lot of things when I'm typing. This helps you along. So when you're typing, you use the print command. It gives you some information about that. Uh, and I type quotes. It does the other quote. And then I'm going to say, hello, students. And then it has a little squiggly here. If you hover over that, it says, uh, it, uh, it tells you a little bit what that is here. Where, where we go? So it gives you a warning. But basically, it's saying uh, you probably want to hit enter here. And uh, 
if you have errors, like if I leave out this, this quote, it does a red little squiggly and you can hover over that, it says you're missing a closing quote. And there's also a little red line over here that tells you kind of that there was an error. So when you have a lot of code, you'll see little lines over here that give you clues that are either warnings or errors. So this is one of the nice things about PyCharm and I recommend you look up other videos on how to use PyCharm. Uh, so let's go ahead and put the quote in. Now the indexing is done down here. It says the indexes are done. Uh, and until they're done, uh, when you right click anywhere in the middle of your editor here, you'll see run. This run won't show up if it's not done indexing. But once it's done indexing, the first time you create a program, you can right click and say run here, and it'll always choose the file you're in. And it's gonna run it. it pops up with a, a window here to show the results. So here it said, hello students. And once you've done that, you can run it in the future using this. Even if your project has a lot of files, it knows this file that you ran, said run is the primary file. And, and that's enough. So that's how you get uh, Python and PyCharm installed.